Sorry, got a little bit distracted with uh, Shackleton there. People have been asking for uh, Shackleton uh, cameo, so he's very willing and eager tonight. So I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm going to talk all about the European heat wave. You know, what are the root causes of the heat wave? What does it mean for the future? You know, it's only, it's the end of June. And these temperatures that we're seeing, we hit 45.9 degrees Celsius in uh, France, in one region. Broke the previous record by almost two degrees. And it's only June. Upper atmospheric temperatures, or rather mid to upper level, are warmer than ever. And that even includes July and August. <clears throat> so what's happening you know we've got a strong jet stream ridge over europe and the warm air is coming up from the sahara crossing the mediterranean getting laden with water vapor coming up into europe causing these incredibly hot warm scary conditions half a billion people in europe 500 million people you know think of the not let alone people's health but think of the um reduced economic activity in all of these countries. Infrastructure just is not designed to handle these temperatures. There's very few air conditioners in places like France and Germany because they're just not used to these type of heat conditions, right? So where do people go? They, they go in the fountains, they go in uh, public places that do have air conditioning, but people just aren't acclimatized. They're not able to deal with these these heat waves. So the 2003 heat wave, it killed 70,000 people in Europe, about 50,000 of those were in France alone. So, you know, you can see why I need Shackleton, you know, to, to have a cameo in this video. I mean, we're talking about pretty dire stuff here. So let's get right back to the uh, details here. Okay. Just my camera's tilted a little bit. Okay, record-breaking heat wave cooks Europe. So we'll get back to this article. So my Twitter feed, at Paul H. Beckwith. I've done a number of recent tweets on the European heat wave. So France records all-time highest temperature of 45.9 degrees Celsius. Um, you know, even here, the article was at 44.3, but... You know, it went up to 44.9. I mean, they have to keep updating these articles because as the day went on, things were getting hotter and hotter. This is an excellent article on how Europe has had five 500-year summers in 15 years. That doesn't include this year. Okay. Um, and this talks about how the jet stream is slowing and increased waviness is wreaking havoc on our lives. Air conditioners are very rare in Europe. It's not just Europe, okay? I mean, India, Chennai, India, 4.65 million people. Look at the reservoir here. You know, in 2019, from the beginning of 2019 to now, reservoir is completely disappearing. Groundwater, you know, they have to go deeper and deeper into the ground to get water. They're just running out of water. There's about 20 Indian cities in this sort of situation. You know, um, huge water shortages will occur just in a matter of years. Okay, getting back to France, the air over Paris, France is record warm temperatures. Okay, so weather balloons were launched and they measured 25 degrees Celsius at 850 hexapascal. That's about 1.5 kilometers altitude that exceed, the, exceeded the previous record from August 19th, 2012, by one degree Celsius. So let's have a look at the uh, data here. So, Okay, so this is showing upper air soundings from the balloon, Paris, France, 49 to 2019. They do two measurements per day, 12 hours apart, sent up two balloons, done at many parts of the world. So you can see the fluctuation here, but you can see the, you know, big fluctuation, but you can see the general trend, the increase. And here we had a peak in August of 87. Here we had a peak in August of 2012. And now this is June. 
Like, what are we going to have in July and August in this region? Right? This is unprecedented. And you can look at the temperatures here. These are the temperatures, um, okay, at 1.5 kilometers above the ground. You can see these areas here, um, you know, very, very warm temperatures. Okay, we'll go down. Um, let's actually, let's uh, we'll go down on my Twitter feed. Uh, you know, this is about India running out of water. Um, and uh, here we go. This is worth expanding full screen. Okay, so this is 2018, June 1st, 2018. This is a temperature scale. Okay, so look at these temperatures here, you know, 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. This is June 26, 2019 on this side, you know, approaching 45 degrees in a number of places. Okay, over 40 degrees. And again, we're just in at the end of June. Um, these are some weather maps. You can see the heat wave here. Um, and there's lots more data. I, there is one other thing I think I wanted to show. Yes, this guy here, record-breaking heat wave cooks Europe. And this is a pattern that caught the news. Okay, this was one of the weather patterns at 850 hexapascals, you know, reaching 29 degrees, 28 degrees. This is 1.5 kilometers up, and you can compare the two eyes and the nose and the mouth to to uh, the famous uh, painting Scream, Edward Munch. Okay. And, uh, you know, more detailed maps and so on. Okay, so let me go into some of the nitty gritty of this. You can find all these things on my Twitter feed. Okay, so France records all time highest temperature of 45.9 degrees. Um, 45.9 at 4.20 p.m. on Friday was reached. Um, it's historic, okay? It's the first time a temperature in excess of 45 has been recorded in France. Okay, um, in Germany, temperatures four degrees higher than historic averages. So here's, here's France, here's Paris, here's where the 45.9 degrees Celsius records were set. You know, and these are some of the regions, and you can see the temperature here. This is from the 1st of June to present in Montpellier, Marseille, and Paris. And you can see the historic daily average. So it should be in the low 20s, low to mid 20s in all of these places. And here we are, you know, um, reaching, well, we reached 45.9 degrees. Okay, now it says here, while well, it's too soon to definitely attribute it, uh, come on, give me a break. You know, it's almost certain that this is due to climate change, the jet streams being warped. You know, the Arctic is changing, so the jet streams are changing, so all weather happens within that context, and everything is changing. Okay, so, you know, the temperatures, these temperatures are dangerous intensity that's more typical of Saudi Arabia. So here we go. We get Saudi Arabian temperatures now occurring up in Europe where there's 500 million people or half a billion people. 4,000 schools closed in France. They don't have air conditioning. You know, many year-end carnivals and things um, canceled. Nursing homes equipping elderly with hydration sensors to make sure they drink enough. Um, now here it says, it talks about the 2003 heat wave causing 15,000 deaths. I don't know where that number comes from. It should be 70,000. Okay, um, you know, fires in Spain and, and uh, so on. Okay, so that's one article. Here's another one. Europe has had five 500-year summers in 15 years and now this. So is this a 500 year? This is probably maybe even a thousand year, once in a thousand year summer. Okay, uh, hotter days are to come. 
Last year, we had 700 deaths in Sweden and more than 250 in Denmark from heat. These countries have never needed air conditioning before this new era of climate change-driven extreme events. So Europe's five hottest summers in the past 500 years have all occurred in the last 15 years, not including this summer. All have been deadly. The 2003 heat wave led to the deaths of 70,000. So this is right. The other article said 15,000. 50,000 of those were in France, 70,000 in Europe. In 2010, 56,000 died in Russia alone. That was in July. Massive heat wave for the month of July in Russia. Temperatures 30 to 35 degrees Celsius near Moscow. Russia lost 40% of their grain crop that year, and they couldn't export. Therefore, grain prices went way up, and it triggered the Arab Spring. Okay, so these extreme, that's, what do the experts say? These extreme heat events are all connected to a slower jet stream that locks weather systems in place. And, you know, they did a study last year and they showed this uh, led to droughts, heat waves, wildfires. Now, if you follow my uh, work, you'll know that I've been saying this for, you know, at least seven or eight years. Okay, and, uh, you know, it's all coming to fruition now. I mean, I don't like to say that I'm right on that, but uh, it's, uh, you know, I've been talking about this for ages and trying to get this into mainstream science for ages, and it is there now, so I have to, you know, I'm moving ahead to think about what is coming next in the pipes, and, uh, you know, I put it in, in these videos, so please make sure you follow, follow my videos. Uh, just Google Paul Beck with uh, YouTube and you can bring up all the videos. You can do searches. I've done hundreds and hundreds of videos on all different topics of abrupt climate change. So now it, con it connects the jet streams to the, or the, the loss of sea ice in the Arctic to amplify the warming in the, in the north, disrupting the natural jet stream patterns driven by the, which jet streams are driven by the temperature difference between the cold Arctic and the hot tropics. And because of the rapidly warming Arctic, the temperature difference is reduced, slowing the jet stream. Okay, so like a slow moving river, it meanders, it can stall in the summer, sometimes for weeks. And we're, we're seeing that happen now. Weather patterns stall with them, be they heat waves or torrential rains. Now, temperatures in Europe are nowhere near as hot as India's current month-long heat wave, where we've reached 51 degree, but most Europeans are unused to anything over 85 Fahrenheit, including Canadians. Air conditioning remains rare. It's found in less than 5% of homes in France and less than 2% of German homes. So they're just not able to deal with this. Add the heat, urban heat island effect, you know, the asphalt and the concrete in the cities, it absorbs heat during the day, releases it at night, so the urban areas are hotter. Temperatures don't decrease at night, and that's a big factor in mortalities because people can't stay cool. They can't cool down at night. You know, people need to get, in, you know, have cold baths a couple times a day, you know, lower their core body temperature. Um, you know, as you use more and more air conditioning, of course, energy use goes up, you stress the power grid, and you release heat, you know, at the back end of your air conditioning out into the street, so people that don't have access to it um, have worse conditions. Okay, um, now it's interesting, um, a reduction in pollution, because they're keeping cars out of the main city, um, will be a silver lining for the Women's World Cup soccer. How do you play soccer in these conditions? The US national team is playing France. This claim that the heat won't be a problem for the players because they're top-notch athletes who can cope. It's the fans who are at risk of heat stroke. Sorry, but this is a fundamental property of the human body. You can have the fittest athlete, 35 degrees, 100% humidity. They drop like, like the uh, fans. Thanks for listening.